Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Zed Stolf here, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the new strong and weak picks for patch 9.12. So to start off, your Aatrox getting hit with some pretty big nerfs for 9.12, passive and ultimate both getting nerfed, so passive cooldown being changed from 15 all the way up to 24 seconds at rank 1, so definitely going to decrease his charting potential in the early game. His ultimate, the healing bonus, is being changed from all incoming healing to self-healing only, so this is actually pretty big as well, uh, because right now in the current meta, you actually do see quite a bit of heal uh, supports being played, like Sona, Soraka, Janna, they're all being played quite a bit right now in this patch, so the that does also hurt him pretty substantially and I do think that with these changes Aatrox is going to drop down to A tier for 9.12. So next up here, Aurelia is continuing to get the Akali treatment, so just being nerfed mainly due to pro play and just leaving her solo queue status pretty bad, so I would just stay away from Aurelia here in 9.12. Her ease range is being lowered, her ease cooldown is being increased, so pretty big nerfs there, and for solo queue, this champion needs to be played at a very high level in order for her to be worth it right now due to the amount of nerfs she's received over the past couple of months, and she's just overall not worth it compared to a lot of other champions right now. So next up for Silas here, he's getting a bunch of different changes in this patch to his passive, his Q, his W, and to his E. So his passive damage is being changed. The part that's being changed here is the base on it. So it's going to scale from 5 plus 2.5 per level to now 9 plus 3 per level. So it's actually a bit of a damage increase there on his passive. However, the radius is being reduced. It's now going to deal 30% reduced damage to targets other than the primary. So less AoE damage there in team fights, and it's now going to have two charges so overall in a 1v1 scenario this should mean that Salas does get a damage increase here but in mid to late game team fights when he's hitting multiple members it will be a damage decrease. His Q is being nerfed as well to where the Q2 explosion radius is being reduced by 20 range, the Q2 damage is being lowered there as well, and the Q2 AP ratio is also being lowered, so his Q3 nerfs there to his Q for this next patch, which is going to be a pretty big hit to Silas. Now his W is getting a buff though, the heal on his W is being increased, so it's being increased by 10 at all ranks, and the AP ratio is being increased by 10%, so I don't think this is going to be enough to make up for the nerfs to his Q there, so overall so far with these changes, I would say it's going to be a net nerf to Silas for 9.12. And then lastly here, the change to his E, his E is getting probably one of the biggest changes here, and it's now only going to shield him on champion and monster hits, so you can no longer just use your E for the dash to get a shield to absorb damage in the laning phase, so in certain matchups, this is really going to hurt Silas, and his ability to just absorb poke and absorb damage in the laning phase is going to decrease significantly. The shield value though, it is being increased, the AP ratio is also being increased on it, and the cooldown, the cooldown is being increased increased a little bit as well. So overall, what this means is that if you're just using your E for the shield or for the dash, then it's going to be an obvious nerf. But if you're using your E more aggressively and you're actually using it to jump onto your opponent, it is technically going to be a buff due to the AP ratio increase and due to the shield value increase. So in Salas's harder matchups, it means that he's going to get even weaker, but in his easier matchups, he'll get even stronger. So I do think overall though, due to the passive change there, due to the Q change and this E change here as well, I do think these are going to be net nerfs to Silas for next patch, and I do think he is going to be dropping from A tier down into B tier. So for Tom Kench being hit with a bunch of different changes here, now when I'm talking about Tom, I'm going to be more so referring to top lane Kench than to support Kench because support Kench is pretty much dead right now, at least for solo queue, nobody's really playing it, so I'm mainly just going to be referring to top lane Kench when I talk about these changes. So for his W here, Champion Spit Law lockout time after animation being lowered from 1 second to 0.25 seconds, so that's actually a buff there to Tom Kench's W. Allies can no longer release themselves from Devour early while affected by enemy loss of control effects, and then allied champion spit range is lowered from 400 down to 250, so honestly not really a change that's going to affect top lane Tom Kench too much, at least the, these three changes won't. The next change here to his W though will affect him a little bit. So Tom's W damage is being decreased. The base damage there is being lowered by 40 at rank 1. It's going to be the exact same though once you do max it out, so they're trying to decrease Tom Kench's early game potency here with these changes, and I do think that this nerf might be enough to drop him down into A tier. We'll have to see, but 40 damage off there on his W is definitely going to decrease his dueling potential 
potential in the early game. I don't think it's going to be the end of the world though, because most of the time when you are dueling with Tom Kench, you're only going to be able to double use your W like once or maybe twice. So I don't think the damage decrease there is going to matter all that much. However, first few levels, you're definitely going to notice it when you're dueling. And I do think that could be enough to drop them down into A tier. Now, pretty big changes to Karma here. So Karma's Q and her E are both getting buffed. The slow on her Q is getting buffed by 10%. The move speed on her E there is being buffed by one second. So 1.5 up to 2.5 seconds. That's actually really, really big. And then the mana cost on her E is being lowered there. It looks like by 10 seconds at all ranks. So really big changes here to Karma. I think especially that change to her E there with that movement speed uh, duration increase, it's going to not only help her for support Karma, also going to help like for top lane karma imagine pl imagine playing against top lane karma like the bruiser or not the bruiser but like the ap hybrid tank karma top lane that you see and having that 2.5 seconds of movement speed to just like kite away from bruisers and to kite away from like melee top laners that would be very very difficult to deal with for next patch and for support as well just giving your ad carry that extra second of move speed or even yourself that extra second of move speed can really make the difference so i do think that would with these changes karma for both top lane and for support is going to move from b tier up to a tier or even s tier for 9.12 and then another shield support getting buffed for this patch, Lulu. So her shield is being increased by 10 at all ranks. Her E's mana cost is also being changed to where it's going to be lowered more so at the later rank. So it's going to be the same at rank one. It's going to be 20 less mana once you do max it out. So overall, I don't think these are as big of changes as Karma got. Like they're nice changes, but they're definitely not as influential, at least in my opinion. So I think that Lulu is going to stay an A tier support for next patch. And then after a couple patches of Nautilus being super good down in the support role, he's finally getting some sort of a nerf. So his Q's damage is being lowered by 20 at rank one. Gonna be the exact same when you do max it out though. So this is gonna be a hit to Nautilus's early game. Is it gonna be enough to drop him out of S tier though? I don't think so. If it does, he's still gonna be like a strong high A tier pick, but I think he should stay borderline S slash A for 9.12. So 280 carries getting some pretty small buffs for this patch. The first one here is Ash. So Ash's W cooldown is being lowered by one second at all ranks. So right now Ash is sitting in a pretty interesting spot in solo queue. She's not really being played a lot, but she does perform very well right now in this patch. And she is a champion that is pretty easy to execute overall. She's not super difficult to play. So I do think with this change here, it could bump her up into S tier for 9.12. She's an 80 carry that's like on the edge right now of S tier for solo queue so she's either going to remain an A tier pick or jump up to S tier for 9.12. And then for Caitlyn, her base AD is being increased by two there, which is actually pretty big. I know a lot of people like to meme about the three base AD, like nerf to Graves, but that nerf a while ago actually ended up like dropping Graves out of the meta. It was actually that big of a nerf. So a two base AD change here on Caitlyn is actually a little bit more substantial than a lot of people would think. And I do think that Caitlyn's in a pretty good spot right now for solo queue. With this change similar to Ash, it could bump her up into S tier for next patch. All right, so next up for Yumi, a bunch of different changes here. Base HP is being increased. Her passive is being nerfed to where the mana refund is being lowered, more so earlier on in the game. Her shield AP ratio is being lowered by 10%. So far, pretty neutral changes to Yumi for this patch. Her W is getting a couple different changes though, to where enemies are now gonna gain an assist on Yumi when damaging her attached ally. Her dash is now interrupted by any immobilizing CC. So honestly, this change here is only really going to affect the very experienced Yumi players that were kind of abusing this mechanic in previous patches. For the average Yumi player, it's not really going to matter too much at all for 9.12. And then her adaptive share is being changed to where it's now going to have a base amount instead of just a scaling or a scaling off of a percent. So what this means is that in the early stages, you're actually going to be giving your AD carry more adaptive damage. However, later on in the game, when you do get like, if you go for an AP build on Yumi, if you go for like a Abaddon's and you get a bunch of ability power, it would be a nerf later on in the game, but for the early stages, it will be a buff to her. Overall, with all these changes here, I think it should be a 
pretty neutral change to Yumi for next patch and expect her to still be a pretty strong A tier pick for 9.12. And then lastly here are some pretty insignificant changes but Warwick is Q's AP ratio is being increased by 10% so not really a change that I think is really going to affect him for next patch. I don't think this means that you're now going to build like an AP build on Warwick or you might go for like a hybrid build in like normal games or something like that but for ranked I just don't think you're going to now all of a sudden start building Warwick AP because of this change so he is going to stay an A tier pick for 9.12. And then for Zach, he's getting two different buffs for next patch. His W damage is being increased by 10 at all ranks, so this should help out his early clear quite a bit. And I know a lot of Zach players in 9.11 have been complaining that his early clear is quite weak right now. His ultimate is being changed as well, to where the knockback is being changed from 400 units from Zach's center to 250 units from the target. Honestly, I'm not sure if this is going to be a buff or a nerf to Zach's ultimate. It should be a buff, I assume, because I don't see as to why they'd be nerfing his ultimate ultimate right now but overall from these two changes here really don't think it's going to bump Zach up into A tier or anything I still think he should stay a B tier jungler and then for Rise, guys, I'm not exactly sure if these changes are hitting live in 9.12, and there's a ton of different changes, so there's no way for me to really go over every single change in this video. That would be a video in itself. It would probably take like five to 10 minutes to go over all these changes. So if you don't wanna take a look at all the changes, then you can take a look at them like on Surrender at 20 or on different sites that have all the changes, but it's definitely too difficult to accurately predict where Rise is going to place on the tier list next pack because he's getting so many different changes. And then for Corrupting Potion, it is getting a small nerf for next patch, so the bonus magic damage over 3 seconds is being changed from 15 to 30 based on level to 15 at all levels, so I don't really think this is going to be the decider as to whether or not you go Dorans or Corrupting in next patch. I still think champions that were building Corrupting in this patch right now and it would go for like a Dark Seal are still going to build it in 9.12. You don't really go Corrupting Potion for the damage, and I don't think the damage is being nerfed too significantly like it's still gonna be pretty good there at the early ranks the later rank damage in corrupting potion is pretty negligible for the most part so I do think overall it should still stay the go-to item on champions that we're already going at right now in 9.11 so that is going to be all for this video guys that's what we're looking at for 9.12 so not too many meta shifting changes i don't think the bigger changes to watch out for are definitely going to be to aatrox silas and karma aatrox and silas should be dropping down in next patch quite a bit and then karma especially for top lane karma i think that could be really abusable in like melee matchups like that that move speed increase there the slow increase on her q it's going to be very very annoying to deal with but with that being said guys if you did enjoy this video then be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you've yet to already so thanks for watching have an awesome day and i'll see you in my next video